So I've said this quite a bit in previous videos that when you start creating a sub D mesh, eventually you want to start splitting it up into individual parts and components and things like that. So the way this looks is you start a, a model using a plane or whatever the case. You know, what you'll do is you'll go ahead and just start extruding out plane like so. Creating some interesting forms perhaps. Making some little changes and adjustments. Alright. Subdivide it once or twice if you want to. And you'll start splitting it. So let's move this out a little bit so it stops getting in the way. So you can use a topology that already exists, or you can cut a new topology. You can hit K and C and just start cutting uh, through these areas like so. Or if you want, you can kind of free cut too. You can just do like K, hold down the knife tool. Just make a little cuts like that, right? And so uh, what you do is you, you do a number like that. You might symmetrize it. You want to definitely go back and try to select it again, if possible. A lot of times just alt-click and it works. Uh, you can select loops, inner loop regions, okay? And so what ends up happening here is you can press P and separate selection. Now, we didn't fix the subdivision or nothing on it yet. But sometimes it's actually useful to cut it first and separate it, and then take them both into edit mode. You do a subdivision on both, turn the subdivision off in edit mode, if you hold Alt, by the way, it'll work on both of them when you hit that little button. And now, uh, you can shade it smooth if you want. So we can see it's subdividing, and even though it's um, it's not perfect mesh, it still lines up with each other because they have the same topology, more or less. So all you have to do is go back through here, perhaps, and start to figure out like what needs to exist and what doesn't need to exist in these areas, right? So if you wanted to say you wanted to merge these two, you would just merge these two. Still, they still match up just fine, right? And so maybe you want to keep this out here like that, right? So just keep it. You don't have to get rid of it. You might have to work out this area inside of it. Obviously, this is not quite maybe what you want. But you can see you can work that out. There's nothing that says you can't go through here and start tweaking that uh, positioning a little bit, right? It's still going to match up as long as the vertices on the outside don't really change. Not a big deal. And so what do we what do we really have to do here? Hmm. There's not a whole lot actually. These two can join. You see? So one thing you might want to do though is on your subdivision, change it to keep corners. Okay. So you can do something like that. And then you can solidify these later on using solidify modifier. can solidify things at different rates if you want. Uh, and you'll end up with something like this, right? So if you don't need the back faces, check only rim. This might be if you're planning on just breaking something up into a bunch of panels, you don't necessarily need all that. If you were to subdivide again, you'll see um, after the solidify, you can add another subdivision. You'll get something like this going, right? And you still might want to check uh, keep corners anyways. It's just good practice, I think. But also, uh, we can change things around a little bit on the um, solidify with the outer section here. We can add a crease to it if we wanted to. All right, you can see creases, of course, are a little bit dependent on the... Uh, subdivision amount. So if we do level 1's here, and we do level 2's here, or 3's, you can see we can tighten them up quite a bit, but it's getting pretty heavy now at this point. But we can, in fact, um, you know, break our models down in this manner very fast. And look, we didn't have, we didn't even struggle with this, right? It was mostly pretty good to go. Um, now it is a very high subdivision, unfortunately. Do level ones on the base. 
maybe. And level two on this one seems to work well. And so these are kind of like a preview as well, because what you might eventually do is once you apply a solidifier, you can go back and you can actually bevel these edges if you wanted to. All right. So it's kind of like a little preview cut, if you would. And uh, you'll have to fix poles and stuff. So the way this looks is when you apply that solidify, or we can we can actually just get rid of the uh, second subdivision. Make sure the first one's at a level one, and then we'll get rid of the uh, second level one. Okay. Now we can uh, convert these to a mesh real quick, possibly. We'll go ahead and grab this area. You can see it's already creased, right? If we do a boundary loop selection, so select loops boundary loop, we could just bevel right off the bat with this one. And then we could do a shape of one, hold those edges, right? And we could do that on the other one as well. Forward slash to isolate it, boundary select, bevel. Okay, and that's going to push all your little poles off of the edges here as well. So we can go ahead and do that. Next time you subdivide, you'll get this kind of a result. Now, there is certain situations where things like this happen. Right? It rounds out the little corners down here. So this corner here, you can put a crease in there. Okay, and The same thing will happen on this one. You'll see you can crease it. So those will meet up again, basically. doesn't always look as good as it possibly could because of that, but it's something you could do. You could remove the uh, the other crease. Probably make it look nicer, actually. Okay, so then we just only crease this corner instead. Like so. All right, so wherever you run into those situations, you'll have to do that now. But that's pretty much what happened over here for the whole thing. It's a little bit more involved on this one, but same idea. You can see, same things. Creases all over the place. So you can do, just like we just did those panels there, you can do little panels like that as well right here. You don't actually have to separate them sometimes. So... In this situation, like I want to make a detail here. I inset, hold control, boundary select, crease. Same process. And then I'll have to go back and determine if I'm going to need to crease other parts, right? Like maybe I need a crease right there. And this one. And then this one. Okay. Let's clean all that up real quick. With any luck, what will happen is it will all hold shape. Okay. So when it subdivides, you can see, we can get different results out of it. Or better results, anyways. If you want to put a chamfer in something, you can. This one, I think, these would be, that's more important there. Now, is that a perfect solution? No, I don't think so. It does seem to work pretty well in most situations, uh, especially when you're doing hard surface objects, right? So, would you, would you be better off maybe physically beveling these? Right? Or, I think you would, personally. But, um, that's going to require more work, right? Because if we have to have a three edge corner here you already know where that's going that means another secondary boundary loop going on in here those would go there right and then you'd have to do an additional holding edge and round and round and round we go that one where you stop nobody knows okay so but it's still it's the idea that you can do that you can see it does look better in my opinion it's just going to take you a lot more time, right? 
especially when you work it all out, it'll look really nice. Just like that. So you're going to have to take some time on your edges doing things like that. I'll come to stuff like this though. This is still a curve, so not a big deal there. Uh, eventually it converts to a mesh. And then this is where you want to take time to make sure you create like proper kind of like plugs and stuff like that. Little things like that. So when that subdivides, you'll get something a little bit more useful, perhaps. You can still crease these, too. Right. But there you go. And that's, um, that's how you come up with crazy stuff like this, guys. So just hope you enjoyed. I'll check out the next one.